Korean Air Flight 801 KE 801 KAL 801 crashed on August 6, 1997, on approach to Antonio B-1 Pat International Airport in the United States Territory of Guam, killing 228 of the 254 people aboard. The aircraft crashed on Nimitz Hill in Assen, Guam, while on approach to the airport. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Aircraft and crew. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Aircraft. <inaudible> 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 Flight 801 was normally flown by an Airbus A300, since Korean Air had scheduled the August 5-6 flight to transport Chamorro athletes to the South Pacific Mini Games in American Samoa. The airline designated HL7468, a 12-year-old Boeing 747-300 delivered to Korean Air on December 12, 1984, to fly the route that night. Topic. Crew The flight was under the command of 42-year-old Captain Park Yong-chul Korean, Bak Yong-chul Hanya, Pu yong jrr Bak yong Chiol. MR, Pak yong chul The captain had close to 9,000 hours of flight time 3,192 of them on the Boeing 747 and had recently received a flight safety award for negotiating a 747 engine failure at low altitude. Park had originally been scheduled to fly to Dubai, United Arab Emirates, since he did not have enough rest for the Dubai trip, he was reassigned to Flight 801. The first officer was 40-year-old Song Kyung-ho Korean, Song Kyung-ho Hanya, Song King Hao RR, Song Kyung-ho, MR, Song Kyong-go, who had more than 4,000 hours flying experience including 1,560 hours on the Boeing 747, and the flight engineer was 57-year-old Nam Suk-hoon Korean, Nam Seok-hun Hanya, Nam Shizun RR, Nam Seok Hun, MR, Nam sok a veteran pilot with more than 13,000 flight hours, including 1,573 hours on the Boeing 747. Topic: Accident. Flight 801 departed from Seoul Kimpo International Airport, now Gimpo Airport, at 8:53 p.m. 9:53 p.m. Guam time on August 5th on its way to Guam. It carried three flight crew members, the two pilots and the flight engineer, 14 flight attendants, and 237 passengers, a total of 254 people. Of the passengers, three were children between the ages of 2 and 12 and three were 24 months old or younger. Six of the passengers were Korean Air flight attendants, who were deadheading. The flight experienced some turbulence but was uneventful until shortly after 1 a.m. on August 6, as the jet was preparing to land. There was heavy rain at Guam so visibility was significantly reduced and the crew attempted an instrument landing. The Glideslope Instrument Landing System ILS for runway 6L was out of service. Captain Park believed it was in service, however, and at 1.35 a.m. managed to pick up a signal that was later identified to be from an irrelevant electronic device on the ground. The crew noticed that the aircraft was descending very steeply, and noted several times that the airport is not in sight. Despite protests from flight engineer Nam that the detected signal was not the glide slope indicator, Park pressed on. The crew lowered the landing gear and continued to prepare the aircraft for landing. Twelve seconds before impact, the ground proximity warning system activated, warning the crew about their actual altitude. First officer Song declared a missed approach, and Captain Park declared a go-around, but it was too late. At 1.42 a.m., the aircraft's main landing gear struck a fuel pipeline, and crashed into Nimitz Hill. The crash site was about 3 nautical miles 3.5 miles, 5.6 kilometers short of the runway, at an altitude of 660 feet 200 meters. Of the 254 people on board, 228 died as a result of the crash. 
One survivor, 36-year-old Hyun Seong Hong, Hong Hyun Seong also spelled Hong Hyun Sung of the United States, occupied seat 3B in first class, and said that the crash occurred so quickly that the passengers had no time to scream, and likened the crash to a scene from a film. Topic. Rescue The rescue effort was hampered by the weather, terrain, and other problems. Emergency vehicles could not approach due to the fuel pipeline destroyed by the crash and blocking the narrow road. United States Navy Seabees of NMC B-133 were some of the first on the scene as they utilized their earth-moving equipment to clear roadways and timber from the crash site approach. The Seabees used backhoes to crack open the still-burning plane to rescue survivors and erected mortuary tents for first responders. There was confusion over the administration of the effort. The crash occurred on land owned by the United States Navy but civil authorities initially claimed authority. The hull had disintegrated, and jet fuel in the wing tanks had sparked a fire that was still burning eight hours after impact. Topic. Rika Matsuda Governor Carl T.C. Gutierrez found 11-year-old Rika Matsuda, from Japan, who boarded the flight with her mother, 44-year-old Shigeko. They were heading to Guam on vacation. Rika Matsuda described what happened to her and her mother to interpreters. Shigeko could not free herself from the aircraft and told Rika to run away. Luggage piled on the girl and her mother as the crash occurred. Rika Matsuda said her mother, unable to free herself, asked her to leave. Shigeko died in the fire. After escaping from the aircraft, Rika discovered a surviving flight attendant, Lee Yong Ho. They stayed together until Gutierrez discovered them. Rika Matsuda, treated at Guam Memorial Hospital in Tamuning, was released on August 7, 1997, and was reunited with her father, Tatsuo Matsuda. The two were then escorted to the governor house where they were the guests of Gutierrez and the First Lady of Guam, Jerry Gutierrez, for several days. Afterwards Rika and Tatsuo Matsuda flew to Japan. Topic. Investigation and probable cause A special weather observation made at 1.47 5 minutes after the impact reported Wind variable at 4 knots, visibility 5 miles, present weather Light rain shower, sky condition Few 1,500 feet, scattered 2,500 feet, overcast 4,000 feet, temperature 26 degrees Celsius, dew point 24 degrees Celsius, altimeter 29.85 inches Hg. The U.S. National Transportation Safety Board NTSB investigation report stated that a contributing factor was that the ATC Minimum Safe Altitude Warning MSAW system at Antonio B-1 Pat International Airport had been deliberately modified so as to limit spurious alarms and could not detect an approaching aircraft that was below minimum safe altitude. The probable cause of the accident was the captain's poor execution of the non-precision approach, the captain's fatigue, poor communication between the flight crew, and Korean Air's lack of flight crew training. The crew had been using an outdated flight map that was missing a 724-foot obstruction symbol depicted at the nimitz vor and that map stated the minimum safe altitude while crossing the nimitz vor for a landing aircraft was 1,300 feet 400 meters, as opposed to the updated altitude of 1,440 feet 440 meters. Flight 801 crashed near the Nimitz Vor, which is situated on Nimitz Hill at a height of 680 feet 210 meters at 1.42 a.m., when it descended below the minimum safe altitude of 1,440 feet 440 meters during its landing approach. The report also identified that the captain may have mistakenly believed that the airplane was closer to the airport than it was and that there may have been confusion about the location of the distance measuring equipment DME in relation to the airport, with the crew anticipating the VOR DME to be located at the airport. 
The DME was sighted at the Nimitz Vor some 3.3 nanometers from the airport, and such a configuration had not been part of Korean Air's simulator training, the crew's training for such non precision approaches having been carried out in scenarios where the DME was located at the airport. Nevertheless, the correct DME distances were shown on the approach chart. The NTSB presented its findings on March 24, 25, and 26, 1998, in the Hawaii Convention Center in Honolulu. The section of the report entitled, Probable Cause, concluded The National Transportation Safety Board determines that the probable cause of this accident was the captain's failure to adequately brief and execute the non precision approach and the first officer's and flight engineer's failure to effectively monitor and cross check the captain's execution of the approach. Contributing to these failures were the captain's fatigue and Korean Air's inadequate flight crew training. Contributing to the accident was the Federal Aviation Administration's intentional inhibition of the minimum safe altitude warning system at Guam and the agency's failure to adequately manage the system. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Passengers. Many of the passengers were vacationers and honeymooners flying to Guam. Point one one year old Rika Matsuda, a South Korean passport holder, was described as Japanese in many press reports. One South Korean was an expatriate who lived in Guam, while New Zealander Barry Small worked in Guam. Topic: <laughs> Deaths and injuries. Of the 254 people on board, 223 to 209 passengers and 14 crew members, all three flight crew and 11 cabin crew were killed at the crash site. Of the 31 occupants found alive by rescue crews, two died en route to the hospital and a further three in hospital. Among the survivors, 16 received burn injuries. The 26 survivors were initially treated at Guam Memorial Hospital GMH in Tamuning or at the U.S. Naval Hospital in Agana Heights. Four were subsequently transferred to the U.S. Army Burn Center in San Antonio, Texas, and eight to University Hospital in Seoul. There were 23 passengers and three flight attendants who survived the crash with serious injuries. Topic. Notable passengers Shin Ki Ha, a four term South Korean parliamentarian and former leader of the National Congress for New Politics, traveled with his wife and around 20 party members. Shin and his wife were killed. Identification and repatriation of bodies On August 13, 1997, 12 sets of remains were brought to Guam's airport to be ready to be flown back to Seoul. Clifford Guzman, a governor's aide, said that two of the 12 were taken back to the morgue. Of the 10, one was misidentified and had to be switched before takeoff. The 10 bodies transported to Seoul were of seven passengers and three female flight attendants. On the same date, an NTSB Family Affairs official named Matthew Furman said that in total, by that date, 46 bodies had been identified. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> After the crash. After the crash occurred, the airline provided several flights for around 300 relatives so that they could go to the crash site. On August 13, 1997, 50 protesters staged a sit in at Guam Airport, saying that the recovery of the dead was taking too long. They sat on blankets and sheets of paper at the Korean air counter. <laughs> Legacy On August 5, 1998, the first anniversary of the crash, a black marble obelisk was unveiled on the crash site as a memorial to the victims. After the accident, Korean air services to Guam were suspended for more than four years, leading to reduced tourist spending in Guam and reduced revenues for Korean air. When Seoul Guam services resumed in December 2001, the flight number was changed to 805. 
The flight number for its Seoul Guam route is now 111 and operates out of Incheon instead of Gimpo, using a Boeing 777-300 or an Airbus A330. In 2000, a lawsuit was settled in the amount of $70 million United States dollars on behalf of 54 families against the airline. New Zealander Barry Small, a helicopter pilot and a survivor of the accident, lobbied for safer storage of duty free alcohol and redesigns of crossbars on airline seats. He said that the storage of duty free alcohol on Flight 801 contributed to spreading of the fire and the crossbars injured passengers to the point where they could not escape from the aircraft. Small himself was injured when he broke his leg on one of the crossbars during the crash, but was still able to escape the aircraft. The government of Guam moved its website about the Korean air crash after the Spamcop program alerted the government that advance fee fraud spam from Nigeria used the website link as a part of the scam. Scam emails used names of passengers, such as Sean Burke, as part of the fraud. Following the Korean Air 801 crash, it was brought to the NTSB's attention that foreign carriers flying in and out of the U.S. were not covered by the Aviation Disaster Family Assistance Act of 1996 and Korean Air did not have a plan to deal with the situation they encountered. As a result, U.S. Congress passed the Foreign Air Carrier Family Support Act of 1997 to require those carriers to file family assistance plans and fulfill the same family support requirements as domestic airlines. Not only does the act ensure that all victims and family members will be treated equitably, regardless of the carrier they use, it also impels many carriers that may not have thought about family assistance issues to give them due consideration in their emergency response plans. Topic. In popular culture Malcolm Gladwell discusses the crash in the context of cultural effects on power structures in his book Outliers, the Discovery Channel Canada, National Geographic TV series Mayday also called Air Crash Investigation or Air Emergency dramatized the accident in a 2007 episode titled Final Approach, although it was also titled Missed Approach for the episode on air disasters, and Blind landing for the UK. Topic See also Impact of culture on aviation safety, Avianca Flight 011, American Airlines Flight 965, Air Inter Flight 148, Air New Zealand Flight 901. Asiana Airlines Flight 733 Crew Resource Management Ground Proximity Warning System GPWS. List of accidents and incidents involving commercial aircraft Pranair Flight 277 Colgan Air Flight 3407 Notes <laughs>